You're watching the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is Thursday, November 1st, 2012, or Dia de los Muertos. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and here's a little look at what we have coming up. Tonight, there is now more reason than ever to avoid aspartame, as one of the most thorough studies yet links the ingredient to leukemia and lymphoma. Then, state troopers have been deployed to all gas stations along the New Jersey Turnpike as gasoline supplies dwindle. And Natural News launches an amazing new beverage. Introducing fluoride soda. Scientifically formulated with 1,000 times the fluoride of your tap water. It's guaranteed to fry so many brain cells that you'll say, I just don't give a crap anymore. And that's a state of ultimate bliss. That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story is truly horrendous, but doesn't surprise me in this wake of, you know, TSA abuses going on. But here we go. TSA screener arrested for alleged child rape. And this is Paul Joseph Watson writes... Federal agency's penchant for hiring child molesters crops up again. A TSA agent in Cleveland has been arrested for allegedly raping a young boy. It's just an example of, a federal, of an employee of a federal agency being accused of child molestation while carrying out pat-downs of children on the job. And that's why, since the beginning of this, we've called, one, it shouldn't happen to anybody, but definitely not young children, because this is going to attract that type of scum to, that go after little children. Let's roll that clip now. Records show investigators believe the abuse happened last year, and this suspected attacker recently left the country to work for the TSA in Germany. We're not naming the guy till he gets hit with charges, likely when he gets back to Cleveland. So are we surprised this is happening? Okay, you put people in this position where they get to lord over people, they're above any sort of law, any, I, I couldn't go grab people like this. You couldn't go grab people like this. Yet these TSA agents, these people in these lower wage jobs that have little or no training are allowed to go out and just grab people, whatever they want. So, of course, they think they're gods. That's why we have reports of them screaming, I am God. I have power over and over again everywhere. So are you surprised? I'm not. I'm not at all. And I'm not surprised at this next story either. Battered New Jersey agonizes over whether to rebuild the shore. I've been to the Jersey Shore several times, but here we go. Now the environmentalists are going to get involved, and they say New Jersey should reconsider not rebuilding everything lost to Superstorm Sandy. And U.S. Geological Survey scientist Jeffrey Williams says rising sea levels and changing weather patterns make it likely that the coast will be hit by more frequent and destructive storms. Oh, especially if you have the DHS going out there and trying to control storms, which we reported on yesterday that they were doing. So, you know, I've been to the New Jersey Shore. I think it's a great place. It's a great place for families to go, for young kids to go hang out. They're, they have several of these uh, amusement parks. You know, it's, it's a place to go kill some time when you're trying to unwind. Plus, you have the beach right there, and they have a big beach. You know, I was just in Miami over uh, the last weekend. Their beaches are actually eroding, and they're very small, and they bring in sand. The Jersey Shore has got a huge beach. They can build on it. They have a lot of room. And, you know, these coastlines change over time, too. They come in, they go out. It's a natural thing. And that's what's happening all over the world. But, yeah, you know, if you're going to build on the coast, you should know that there are some risks to that. And that's just the way it is. If you want to build on it, though, I say go right ahead. But this goes to more. There's, it's not just the, the Jersey Shore that's under attack. State troopers deployed as tensions boil at gas stations in Sandy's Wake. And these are the people who didn't prepare. Or maybe they prepared, but for not you know, not enough time for these temperatures to go out. And this is out of Fox News. What we have are basically people standing in line trying to get gas in gas cans. Here we go. Officials said that more than half of the gasoline service stations in the New York City area and New Jersey have been shut down because they're either out of fuel or don't have power to operate the pumps. In addition, pipelines and refineries have been shut down due to store damage. More than 80% of the stations in New Jersey were unable to sell gasoline as of Wednesday. That's according to the New Jersey Gasoline Convenience Automotive Association. So what have you got? You have the fact that people prepared, but maybe not enough, not for enough time, because a lot of these people are getting gas for generators. They're trying to keep the lights on in their house, but they didn't have a small stockpile. And, you know, they had plenty of time. There was plenty of time to get ready for this storm for people to go out and get prepared. Let's continue on with the article. 
Rivaling the demand for gas was the scarcity of D batteries, the kind most flashlights use. Virtually every store in New Jersey, New York City, and Long Island was cleaned out, and the reports of them for se are, were selling for as much as $5 a piece. And this is something we see in a lot of crises. You know, bottled water suddenly goes for $10 a gallon instead of a dollar a gallon. Flashlight batteries, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, stuff people use, you know, for, to keep clean. These things suddenly get these amazing markups, and you see people taking advantage of people, especially when it's down. You know, all I can say is it's time to prepare, and we're going to get into more of that, some products that we sell that allow you to prepare. One more, though. Here's another little control mechanism Bloomberg was imp implementing. Driving restrictions in two Manhattan lead to gridlock. And you're saying, well, they want people to carpool. So why are they having driving restrictions? Well, they actually set up checkpoints, and they actually funnel people down to one lane, and we're making sure that there were only, you know, at least three people in every car before they allowed them into the tunnel. If they didn't have three people, they were turned around. So by funneling all this traffic into one lane, it, it made a huge gridlock. But this is what you get in these situations. You get these people, you know, coming in and maintaining control. So what's the first thing they do? They control the modes of travel. They control food. They control transportation and fuel. All these things are, are uh, controlled. So what you have is things that lead to giant gridlocks, gasoline lines, people paying $5 for D batteries. So what do we learn from all this? You need to prepare. I want to go over a few things we have that allow you to prepare. One, I think is, I don't think it's an item we've ever shown on this show before. The first thing here is this Aquapod, which is what we sell at the InfoWars store. Here's something you can put in your bathtub. You fill it up with water before the storm gets there. And then if the water gets cut out or if it's contaminated with sewage, well, you've got fresh water that then you can pump out. It comes with a little pump inside. And you can actually pump it out into your water filter. You and your family have clean drinking water. If you have two bathtubs, well, you got twice the amount of water there. And it does not have BPA in it, so you're not going to be drinking uh, those BPA chemicals by holding this in. So this is a great, just great gift for Christmas, great gift to get, put in your closet, and have it there for those emergencies. Here's another one, the pocket socket, okay? Charge up your cell phone, charge up your radio, things that would need batteries, um, but you can charge it up here, you pull it out, you crank it up, you have it plugged in, it's got a little uh, outlet there, allows you to run things, as long as you got the willpower and the manual dexterity to do it. And finally, the life straw, this is something you can put in your bug out bag. Basically, you pop it open, and then you use this in, put it in the water, and you can, it actually filters the water as you suck it through. Better than drinking contaminated water, people. You know, that's what I say, get prepared. And we had a few reports that we covered of these nuclear reactors going into, uh, you know, these emergency modes. Well, for that, you know, we have a lot of different things we could offer you. One, we have these little cards here, the rad triage sensors, which actually you wear this around your neck, and it shows you if you've received uh, high doses of radiation. Here's a, a hazard pack digital survival library that goes over different things to do surviving in a... Uh, and, you know, a radioactive environment. We have the particle mass, which will keep you from breathing in those particles. The Thyrosafe, which is potassium iodide tablets. And this is exactly what Homeland Security uses when they're trying to keep their people safe. We also have these little meters that come, these rad stickers, that come with a little uh, manual on how to use them and what the numbers mean. These you could put all over your home so you could see if, you know, you're driving around your car if you went through a radiation area or if you're getting it in your home. And then finally, here's a book, Nuclear War Survival Skills. I'm not saying we're going to have a nuclear war, but stuff like this could help you out in case there's some sort of fallout, some sort of nuclear fallout like Chernobyl, anything like that. Well, and let's move on. We just went over a lot of bad news. I kind of want to go over a funny story here. Natural News launches a diet fluoride soda, an amazing new beverage made with aspartame and hydrofluorosilicic acid. Can you say hydrofluorosilicic acid three times? That's the stuff that they call fluoride that they put in your water that really isn't fluoride. It's a bunch of other chemicals. And, you know, my description of it isn't going to do it justice. Let's just go to their commercial now. I can't believe they're talking about a product like this. So let's roll it. Introducing Fluoride Soda, scientifically formulated with 1,000 times the fluoride of your tap water. It's guaranteed to fry so many brain cells that you'll say, I just don't give a crap anymore. And that's a state of ultimate bliss. Plus, it's sexy to be stupid. Harvard researchers have confirmed that fluoride dumbs you down. But what they didn't tell you is that it also makes you too cool for school. I was never popular at school until I began drinking fluoride soda. 
Now I'm flunking out and more popular than ever. And for those who want to slim down while you dumb down, we've got diet fluoride soda with extra aspartame combined with the fluoride to hammer your face harder than an ex-wife with a hard liquor hangover. But wait, there's more. Need more energy to power through your awesome day as a blissful fluoride drinker? You need Monster Diet Fluoride Soda, formulated with 10 times the caffeine of any other drink on the market. Between the caffeine, the aspartame, and the fluoride, you'll be riding a rocket ship of chemically enhanced coolness all day long. But hold on! In the next 30 days, we will be introducing the world's first Monster Chemo Diet Fluoride Soda. With a full therapeutic dose of brain-frying chemotherapy, this soda packs more chemicals into one can than a trailer park meth lab. And for those of you who do not give a shit about the three remaining brain cells bouncing around inside your pathetic skulls, we now have the ultimate Monster Chemo Agent Orange Diet Fluoride Soda with genetically modified aspartame. The American Medical Association calls it the most nutritious beverage ever invented. Yeah, it makes your hair fall out. But you won't even care because all your cognitive functions are instantly burned out, rendering you completely unconscious but still able to vote. Ask for it by name. Monster Chemo Agent Orange Diet Fluoride Soda with genetically modified aspartame. Sold at pharmacies and Whole Foods. There you have it. It eats your brains and has a thousand times more fluoride than you can ever uh, want. And, you know, I like the way Natural News took this. They kind of took a, a real serious situation and made it funny. Hopefully it'll wake up a few people. It's like what they did with that TSA video that uh, got censored by DHS and YouTube and all those people. Anyway, the headline is, Natural News launches diet fluoride soda, an amazing new beverage made with aspartame and hydrofluorosilicic acid. Now onto a more serious story, okay, because this one had aspartame in it, and now we have, oh, aspartame linked to leukemia, lymphoma, and a new landmark study on humans. And how landmark was it? Well, over two million person years of study went into this. For this study, researchers prospectively analyzed data from the nurse's health study and health professionals follow-up study for a 22-year period, a total of 77,218 women and 47,810 men were included in the analysis for a total of 2,278,396 person years of data. Apart from the sheer size, what make this, makes this study superior to other past studies is the thoroughness and with, with which the aspartame intake was assessed. Every two years, participants were given a detailed dietary questionnaire, and their diets were reassessed every four years. Previous studies, which found no link to cancer, only ever assessed participants' aspartame intake at one point in time, which could be a major weakness affecting their accuracy. No, duh. And thanks to Natural News for pointing this out, because a lot of people aren't going to get this news until people like Natural News, Mike Adams and his crew put it out. Um, who is the writer on here? Ethan Evers uh, wrote this story. And, you know, we reposted it. Other people are going to grab it. And, you know, putting this out with their other story about their, you know, diet, hydrofluorosilicic acid and aspartame soda. Well, hopefully maybe we can wake a few people up because that's the name of the game. Waking people up just a little at a time. Another problem we have here in our country is the growing police state. In fact, the growth rate of the police state now exceeds population growth. Isn't that nice? We now have more jail keepers uh, growing at a rate faster than we have humans here. The numbers of police grew by 25%. In 2008, there were 705,000 full-time sworn officers employed in the United States. That number was 564,000 in 1992. This represents an annual growth rate of 1.6%, which exceeds the 1.2% population growth rate in the United States, according to that survey. And let me tell you, we've shown you plenty of videos of police brutality, so they're obviously not getting the brightest of the bunch. And I just want to go over a few stories here that illustrate that. The first one, this is from Front Lines of Revolutionary Struggle. It's not rhetoric. The local cops are an occupying army. And they've got a lot of little pictures here of these tanks that are cropping up, uh, these SWAT teams that get these all-terrain vehicles that used to be made for war, but hey, now they're coming home because we got to have a place somewhere for these, and you know the populace is getting uppity because the 
the economy is imploding and there's no place for people to work. Here's the next story. Mayor Bloomberg, I have my own army. In a speech at MIT last night to discuss the PAC sweepstakes to build a tech campus in New York, Mayor Bloomberg says, uh, well, you know, I have my own army in the NYPD, which is the seventh biggest army in the world. I have my own State Department, much to Foggy Bottom's annoyance. We have the United Nations in New York, so we have an entree of a diplomatic world that Washington does not have. So there's Mayor Bloomberg basically throwing in your face that he has an army of thugs out there to basically do his bidding. And this last story from Mail Online is really sad. They brought in an army to take out a 16-year-old boy, anguish of parents whose suicidal son was shot by a SWAT sniper at his home. And they got some pictures of the boy there. He's a 16-year-old who had a bad day at school. He grabbed the parents 357. He was just thinking about shooting himself. She called the cops saying, please have someone come talk to my son. Well, they sent in the SWAT team and a bunch of other people with riot shields. And let's scroll down a little further. You can see the guy who shot the boy, the real tough guy there. There he is on the left-hand side of your screen in the glasses. There's the tough guy there who took him out with a giant sniper rifle, shot the kid through the abdomen. You can read the horrible details in the story. But it just goes to show you, when you bring in this police state, when you, know, you have the highest prison population in the world per capita, you're going to have stuff like this. You have these police unions, and these police unions have these lobbyists that lobby to keep more people in jail and make more laws. So, I mean, and we're all citizens, aren't we, of this, of this country, of, of these states? And why do we really need these big police populations? Our crime rates are actually going down. They've started rising the past year, but that's because the economy is imploding. Oh, maybe they know something we don't know. Maybe they've been imploding the economy on purpose so they could come in and bring in this police state. My advice is get to know your neighbors, get to know your local cops, and try to educate them before it gets out of hand. And with that, we go to the quote of the day, and it's from Secre Under Secretary of State Patrick Kennedy. They had the individual under investigation, and our revocation action would have disclosed the U.S. government's interest in the individual and ended our colleagues' ability to quietly pursue the case and identify the terrorist plans and co-conspirators. Under Secretary Patrick Kennedy, allowing, admitting that they allowed the underwear bomber on the plane. And that has to do with our next guest who is coming up, which is Kurt Haskell, who is basically the main witness to point out that, hey, I saw them get the underwear bomber on the plane. I saw the FBI cover up. He went even to the, the court case and basically said, put me in as a witness. Put me in as a witness. Well, the underwear bomber went ahead and pleaded guilty to some other charges. So he, had, he went with the plea bargain agreement. So there was no trial. And even at the sentencing, Kurt Haskell uh, stood up and had his say in court, at least not on the record, but in, in that point where victims get to speak out. And he was called a, uh, a conspiracy theorist by the judge. And we're going to be talking to him about that and a whole host of issues. He's actually running for Congress. And so we're going to be up back with him next. Um, going to break here, we're going to play that special that we're going to have coming up on Tuesday, the election special. There it is, Glo Globalist Puppet Election 2012. It's going to be a free stream starting that day with the radio show from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then we're going to come back from 5 p.m. to midnight with our election coverage. And then the next day, we're also going to have the free streams going with more election fallout. Or whichever globalist puppet gets elected, you know we're all going to lose. And with that, we're going to go to break. Every four years, the United States of America hears the drumbeat of billions of campaign dollar tech ads. Meaningless debate with empty analysis in poll after poll after poll. This can only mean one thing. It's time to pick our globalist puppet leader. We're going to be left with a choice of a lesser of two evils. And I'm saying I don't go out with evils. I don't deal with evils. I don't do business with evils. I don't hang out with evils. Why would I vote for an evil to run my life or run my country? Will it be globalist puppet A or puppet B? They continue to vote for these Democrats and Republicans, the people that are wrecking our country, and yet they still vote for them. Unlike North Korea and China, we Americans have the illusion of choice this November 6th. I think that a lot of votes are going to be stolen. I don't know how you could possibly have voter fraud when your son owns the voting machines. 1.4 million votes were lost. 
spoiled, as they call them in the biz, through these so-called glitches. The choice is not up to you. Which management team from Slavery Incorporated will run our country into oblivion for the next four years? Tune in to InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.tv this Tuesday, November 6th, as another meaningless pageant is played out. While we fight to retain our liberty, while we fight to expose globalism, we have to realize we're talking about a very powerful combination of power. Renowned author and expert Joel Scalzi breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night. And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are going to be crowded, they're going to run out of gasoline, they're going to run out of food, and then they're going to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters, the health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. My personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized, incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time. Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. And our next guest, who is uh, now running for Congress in Michigan, well, back in uh, August, we reported that he won his uh, House of Representatives primary. And why is this important? This is Kurt Haskell. And um, he defeated fellow Democrat Ruben Martinez, and he's facing Republican Tim Wahlberg in no November. And, you know, why are we picking this particular race in Michigan to highlight? Well, back in February this same year, Kurt Haskell went uh, to the sentencing of the underwear bomber and the court case going on in Michigan. And he read a statement that basically indicted the federal government in collusion and cover up. Uh, basically, anything you could go after the government on with this case, he, he said it, it was all there. And we put out a four part interview series, which you can find on YouTube. Um, on the Alex Jones channel, detailing different facets from him being on the plane, witnessing the event, to witnessing the cover-up right after it, to witnessing the cover-up going on in the case, and then finally, the different admissions from government officials, specifically one Patrick Kennedy, which we just read his quote, where he talks about how if we would have gone after this guy, it would have revealed that we were actually looking at his group. So they let him on the plane. They admitted it. Uh, let's go back to uh, May 10th, 2012, the Al-Qaeda underwear bomber, another foiled false flag. This is from one of our writers, Stephen Lindman. Um, and basically, he just kind of details all the different fabrications and lies that, that went with this underwear bomber thing. And then now coming up to July 27th, TSA chief Al-Qaeda altered underwear bomber formula. So now we have Al-Qaeda saying, we're going to mix the formula a little bit. Well, here's the problem. It doesn't matter what they put in this bomb. Um, 
they never provide the person, the patsy that they stick on the plane with a proper blasting cap to even make the bomb detonate. And so there was the same thing with the shoe bomber. This guy was trying to light his shoe, light um, his shoe bombs on fire with with a, a lighter, and it wasn't going to work. Same thing with Abdul Farouk Matalib. And so with that, we turn to Kurt Haskell, who's running for Congress in Michigan, coming up in this election, which will be next week. Kurt, how's it going today? Hey, good. Glad to be on the show. Excellent. Uh, we love having you on because uh, it's good to see people. Standing up for America, you know, and, and I mean that in the real sense, not in the Fox News sense where America means going to war and bombing brown people, you know. So how is your campaign going now? Uh, what are your thoughts going into this? And are you excited? You know, I'm, I'm excited to have it done. It's been a long road. It's been a lot of work. Uh, a great, you know, a great deal of my time has been put into this since uh, March 3rd when I got into it. Looking forward to have it done win or lose just so i can get some sleep and a little bit of rest so excellent well let's go over your platform i was looking at it um you know rebuild america's middle class rebuild our restore our economic competitiveness you've seen firsthand what's been going on with the deindustrialization of america why don't you talk a little bit about that well sure you, you know you can see it here in, in michigan where you know we have the auto industry and we have treaties like nafta for instance that has allowed 1 million manufacturing jobs to be sent out of the United States. And it's no coincidence that Michigan's taking a hit. We hit. Our economy here is devastated. People are leaving the state left and right, and people are wondering why. Well, you don't have to look too far to see some of these treaties that we have sending our jobs out of the country. So, you know, it's pretty obvious what's happened here, but nobody's doing anything about it. Right. And and just to play the, the fake two party system political game that was uh, signed by Bill Clinton and something that Al Gore even defended on Larry King Live to uh, when he was talking with Ross Perot saying, oh, it's not going to do any of that stuff, Larry. Don't listen to Ross Perot as Ross was saying, hey, this is going to take jobs and ship them to Mexico, which then they shipped to China after that. Well, it's, it's pretty obvious to see, you know, when you figure somebody in Mexico makes a dollar an hour and, and here in Michigan they make a lot more than that. Well, where are these companies going to send the jobs? They're going to send them where they can pay workers a dollar an hour. Right. It's not, hard, it's not hard to figure out. Exactly. And what, what happens with that extra money that they were saving, it goes into giant bonuses. And you see these corporate salaries since the mid-80s just fly off the charts. Well, exactly. And the workers get, get the shaft, basically. And you have nobody in Congress even admitting this or, or, or stating this on the record and standing up for the working people of the country, which is part of what I want to do. You know, I'm not tied into any of these corporations or special, special interests that push through treaties like this in order to benefit the ultra wealthy, you know, and the corporations themselves. Right. Uh, I, I support the people of the country. And you know how I can tell that? Because you support the Second Amendment. And that is that guarantees the First Amendment, first of all, and it guarantees everybody the right to protect themselves. And I mean, you know, the police in Detroit have basically said, enter at your own risk. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and not, you know, I don't support just the Second Amendment. I support all of them. So very strongly. And I, I think that's something that's lacking in Congress, in Congress, people that actually stand up for the Constitution. So that that's another very strong point um, that I'm making and in, in part of my platform. Now, if you were to become a first term congressman, what what sort of things what would you go after in the beginning? What kind of, um, you know, splashes would you like to make right off the bat? You know, I haven't gone into it, into a lot of detail thought about what I want to do exactly, just kind of general principles that I've thought about, which is restore the Constitution. You know, obviously, laws like the Patriot Act need to go. Uh, you know, we can't have the TSA running wild at the airport, you know, feeling people up and looking at uh, people naked through their body scanning machines, you know, and things like that. I, I think... The, the security state that we're in now, where we have this huge chunk of our budget going to uh, wars overseas that are not needed and a huge amount being spent on the war on terror and the loss of constitutional rights that goes along with it here in the United States needs to stop. Things like that, as well as something I mentioned a little while ago, 
um, some of our treaties sending jobs overseas. So those are a couple things I'm focusing on. Any more specific than that, I haven't given it a great deal of thought to this point. And your opponent, uh, what, what's his name, Tim Martinez, uh, Tim Wahlberg. Tim. Yeah, and you you have a little comparison. What what are some of the things that you don't like that he's doing? You think he needs to be removed from office? Well, Mr. Wahlberg is well known to represent the interests of the large banks, Wall Street, and the large corporations. They donate a significant amount of money to his campaign, and you know he uses it to continue to get reelected, and then gives all the people of the country the shaft, not only economically but continues to vote against their constitutional rights, having voted for the Patriot Act, CISPA, um, HR 347, and things like that, uh, while continually voting for the interests of the corporations, too, you know, and destroying the economy and sending jobs. So he's, my opponent's not very well liked to people that are actually paying attention to politics. So, unfortunately, he has a great deal of money, so he can spend... Uh, what he's doing and lie through the media and that sort of thing. So some people actually that aren't paying attention actually think he's doing a good job. Right. He he's can throw out that image of I'm a great guy. Just vote for me. And I'm, I'm for the little man, even though he never really talks about what he actually does for the little man. Exactly. Or he flat out lies about it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, let, let me ask you this. You, you've basically stood up to the government on many levels. You stood up to the FBI. You stood up in court. Uh, to read statements, you were basically called, you know, um, a, a conspiracy theorist by the judge. Uh, did, did that prompt you to basically come forward and then start, you know, since you didn't see any recourse, like nobody was listening on, on the federal level to you, did that make you just say, hey, I'm, I'm just going to run for Congress. I'm going to start changing things. No, no, because I could have filed a lawsuit against the government. I chose not to. And actually, me running for Congress has more to do with the redistricting that occurred in January moving Monroe County, where I live, out of John Dingle's district and into Tim Walbert's district. So it has much more to do with that. However, um, you know, the, my thoughts on what are going on in Washington, you know, I don't have a very high opinion on what's going on in Washington. Uh, you know, I think we need transparency in government so that the people can actually know what's going on in Washington. So I suppose that, that would tie into the underwear bomber case somewhat seeing that, you know, I'm very much a supporter of transparent government, and what I saw during the underwater bomber case is exactly the opposite. Right. And what did you feel about this article that came out in July 27th at, at the Huffington Post? Al-Qaeda has altered the underwear bomb formula. Uh, the headlines: TSA chief Al-Qaeda altered underwear bomb formula. And it's out of the Huffington Post from July 27th. And they're basically going into, hey, now they're making a new type of bomb that we have to look out for. And not even talking about the fact that the underwear bomber couldn't have even ignited his bomb if he wanted to. I actually didn't read that article. I didn't know about it. But if what you're saying is true, then it's just a complete fabrication because obviously the the underwear bombing case, uh, in the underwear bombing case, the bomber was provided his defective bomb by an undercover agent of the U.S. government. So how can we now say Al-Qaeda is changing the formula when Al-Qaeda didn't even make the first bomb? So it must just be a pure propaganda piece. Totally agree. Now, how, how do you feel if you do win? You're going to be going into a pit of vipers. Uh, uh, men that have no, uh, men and women who have no, um, I guess, faith in humanity other than the paychecks that are coming their way from their, their corporate masters. I mean, how are you going to stand up to that? Um, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to be kind of a, an island in the middle of all this. Well, it'll be nothing different than what, what I've been going through since 2009. Christmas Day 2009. So, you know, anyone that followed that case knows that I stand for truth and justice and a transparent government, and I will do whatever it takes to, to speak out about that and to try and achieve those goals. I could care less if every single person is against me if I'm doing the right thing. And that's exactly what I'm going, going to do in Washington uh, to try and bring about a transparent gov government and try and change public opinion to, to inform uh, different people in the public on uh, you know, some things that are going on in Washington, which maybe they wouldn't be too happy with. 
Right. Is uh, they're really? I mean, when I look at the government, I just I think of these people that just want to control our lives, tell us what to do, tax us till we can't really do anything else other than work harder just to maintain that same level of uh, standard of living that we've enjoyed. Now, um, how do you feel about uh, QE4, this unlimited, I guess it's QE3 now, who, who's keep, who can keep count? But basically, $40 billion a month going to pay off the banks every month to try to keep this housing bubble inflated. I mean, is this something that we should be concerned with? Yes, entirely. I, frankly, I don't know why the country is not in more of an uproar over it. I, I guess they're just not paying attention, but... Um, QE3 is basically unlimited money printing by the Federal Reserve Bank to lower the value of the dollar uh, just to keep, you know, the housing market in Wall Street infl and inflated. So it's completely against the interests of the people of the country because when you print more money, what it does is it causes steep inflation, which you're seeing in food and gas prices because the, the dollar is going down in value, so therefore... The cost of imports are going up, and therefore, people that pay more of their income towards food and gas, the lower class and middle class, are getting harder to stay at while the wealthy are having very little effect to them. So it's completely destructive to the economy. And, you know, and you're seeing it in this country. The middle class and poor are, are going down and as far as their standard of living. The rich are still rich. So it, it's completely destructive. I can't believe the U.S. government... Well, I do believe the U.S. government's doing it, but it's shocking because what it is is a set of politicians in Washington that fail to do what's right for the American people, and that's put an end to this quantitative easing. It's easier for them to just kick the can down the road and blame somebody else down the line instead of doing what's right for the country and stopping it. To totally agree with you there. Are you worried about... Um uh, racial riots uh, if Obama doesn't get elected, especially living in Detroit, which has a high, you know, uh, it has a high black population. And we've seen um, all kinds of crazy stuff going on lately. I, I, I just want to tell people either way, whoever wins a president, you know, we're going to be stuck with the same type of policies that got us into this situation already and that it has nothing to do with who's president and it never will until we really change, you know, some fundamental things like getting people on a local level. But what do you have to, what would you like to tell people out there about this kind of divide and conquer that seems to be going on with the mainstream media? Yeah, you know, I haven't given it even one ounce of thought whether there would be riots or not. I would, I would be shocked if there were really. I think People in Michigan would be would be pretty unhappy if Mitt Romney won. He doesn't have a whole lot of support here, but I would be shocked if there if there were any riots. Um, I I hate this divide and conquer mentality by the politicians, Republicans blaming Democrats and vice versa. I think it's terrible. Uh, I've really tried to not do that in my campaign at all. I you know I may criticize some things people do. I'll do that to either. Either party, it doesn't matter to me, but I try and point out specific people or, sp or specific acts that I don't like. I don't blame just one party or the other. And I think that's really destructive to the country to have this back and forth blame game when really both parties are at fault with the current status of the country. Right, to totally. Uh, coming up with the election, what do you have any big events planned or anything? What are you going to be doing? Election night. From Rowe, Michigan, Dolce Vita. Come and join my party, election night party, 8 to midnight. Excellent. And uh, let's say, let me give you two minutes here just to uh, speak out to the people who might be undecided in your district or, or people who maybe want to help you get in, a guy that speaks for truth. Uh, what do you have to say to the people out there? Well, you know, my opponents try, try to spend, you know, spend my involvement in the underwear bomber case against me. But look, I'm just a regular guy. I witnessed something extraordinary. I spoke the truth, and I spoke out to a government that was acting not in the interest of the people. And that's the bottom line with the underwear bomber case. I stand for truth and justice. I stand for the American people. I'm not bought off by corporations. I'm not a career politician at all, and I have no desire to be. I only have one goal in mind, and that's to get to Washington and try and improve this country and shed light on some of these corrupt things going on in Washington to hopefully have a more transparent government and try and change public opinion, which I think will be the ultimate goal to change how things are done in this country. 
we can change public opinion, then we can get the right people voted into office and therefore change the country for the better. Those are my goals. Um, I think they're pretty admir admirable goals, and I'm not your career politician, and don't get stuck um, by the D that follows my name for the Democratic Party because I don't represent the state or national Democratic Party. I represent the people of the party and the people of the United States. So that's what I think people in District 7 in Michigan should know about me, and hopefully I will have their vote on November 6th. Um, also, we're doing some last-minute fundraising today, and I would appreciate if any of your listeners would be so kind as to go to my website, KurtHaskellForCongress.com, and uh, make a contribution. We're doing a last-minute push so that we can do some more radio, robocalls, and mailings over the, the last five days of the election. So I would be very thankful for that. Yeah, we've been showing your website up um, throughout this interview, and I, I think it's despicable that Tim Wahlberg would use the fact that you witnessed a uh, potential terrorist event and spoke out against it and didn't didn't fall for the fact that they said, no, you didn't see what you really saw. You didn't see that. There was no sharp dress, man. There was none of that. You know, and, and you stuck to your guns, and that really needs to be commended. You could have shut up. You could have just gone along like most of the other people did. You, you were contacted by other people that said, hey, I saw something else, too. You know, I, I, what, what they're saying isn't right. And you had the cojones to sit there and say, no, this is wrong, all the way up till the end. So I, I really think, I hope you win, and I hope you can really get out there and, do, and make some of these changes because it's got to start – on the local level. It's not a national election that's going to change the course of this country. We got to start at the grassroots, the ground level, and build it up. Right. Well, th this is a pretty high level that I'm running for, actually. You know, this is United States Congress. So this is in a, a small position. I'd be off to Washington. So, and hopefully be the next person to actually represent the people, the people of the United States, which I think is sorely lacking, other than a couple couple congressmen right now, but I think it's desperately needed other than to have people in Washington that represent the large corporations. Yeah, and people yeah. speak out against it. The numbers show it, that people are dissatisfied with the current government. Let's get new people in there. Let's see what happens, especially with Kurt. I mean, I've, I've known Kurt. I've met him personally, and I can't tell you. I can't see a better person going up there to represent. You stuck to your guns from the beginning. You know, you you come, you you spoke out, and you didn't stop. And that's got to be commended on a lot of levels. So, best of luck to you, Kurt. You're running in District Seven in Michigan. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. All right. Well, don't forget to go out and vote. Uh, all you District 7 people out there in Michigan, vote for uh, Kurt Haskell. I'm going to go ahead and endorse him. Um, you know, I've, I've had a couple people running for Congress here, and Libertarians, Democrats, you know, hey, if you're for the people, that's who I'm for. Kurt, thanks for coming on the show today, and best of luck to you next Tuesday. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me back on. Hopefully we'll do this thing on Tuesday. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Well, there goes Kurt Haskell. Gentleman who's got, you know, uh, let me tell you, to sit there and speak out against the FBI, you know, government officials, the local courts, I mean, over and over again, just to stand up and really try to make a difference. He didn't sit down. He didn't just say, well, you know, maybe, maybe what the government's telling me is true. No, he saw with his own two eyes what happened there that day. And now, you know, the fact that he's running for Congress, this is somebody who really wants to make a difference in this world. So if you can give him your support, I think that'd be great. That's our show for today. Uh, if you want to get a magazine here, our new InfoWars magazine, let me tell you, it'll wake up a lot of people. And this, this new issue is trying to deprogram the zombies out there that are in your culture. You know them. They're the ones who aren't really interested in what's going on. They're more interested in football or, you know, dancing with the stars or any of that garbage. And, you know, while that's good every once in a while, this will wake people up and get people thinking about the real issues, the real power brokers who control the society, not left, right, not any of that bull that we go and talk about all the time. And uh, with that, that's going to be our show, and we'll be back tomorrow with another great show. Paul Joseph Watson is going to be sitting in. We're going to have one of the producers of The Great Culling. So with that, I'm Rob Dew, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for watching.